This alien looking creature isn't something you're likely to find in your backyard unless you live in Malaysia. It's a giant thorny phasmid, a type of walking stick. And this particular insect is an ambassador. To really get people turned on to nature, you can't just go save it in some faraway place. You have to really put it into their hands. Norm Gershens is director and co-founder of San Francisco's Insect Discovery Lab. These are all females. The lab brings insects from around the world into schools and senior centers to give people an experience they can't get from books and pictures. So this was just born last night. I think what we should do is look at one that I have right here. Ah. This is <laughs> just a spectacular animal. And when people see this, they think, my goodness, we would hate to see something like this disappear from the earth. So I'll tell you what, roll up your sleeve just a little bit. <laughs> And when he starts to walk, because that's what she does. She, sorry, ma'am. And just sort of let him, let her, excuse me, uh, walk about. If you look at her face. So alien. Her face actually was used as a template in the first Star Wars movie. Oh, uh, I know to, that. I know the one you're talking to about. To develop some of the alien creatures. What does this animal eat? Oh, it eats. As it, it climbs it, around me. Well, it's harmless, first of all. <laughs> it's pretty harmless. So when people ask me, is this animal endangered? I answer it this way. Well, we're not 100% sure. We haven't done enough research yet. But what we do know is the forests are endangered. The Insect Discovery Lab is not just about show and tell. This is called a whip tail scorpion or a whip scorpion. Its main purpose is to raise awareness and money to save these creatures by protecting their habitats. Once I started working in the zoos, I realized the value they had for the public. But the piece that they weren't doing yet was linking what you were seeing in the, in the zoo to saving it in the wild. So Norm started collecting money from conservation parking meters at zoos, aquariums, and museums to buy acres of rainforest, the home for these weird insects and millions of other creatures. There's nothing like a giant African millipede. <laughs> This is from Africa, probably a female. They're hard, now I have to tell you, it's hard to sex <laughs> millipedes, and, and they're not very fond of you sexing them. Okay. So, but put both hands flat. Right, so first you need to know the basic difference between millipedes and centipedes. Millipedes. Centipedes have a hundred legs and well, millipedes have a thousand. No, 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 that was just on Jeopardy, and I have to say I think I should call them and tell them the truth. It's very simple. On every single segment of a millipede, there are four legs. Centipedes only have one pair, so they have two legs per segment. Okay. Now, I don't know if, if young kids will be watching this, but um, I'm not sure if I can talk about millip millipede reproduction. They have it hands down. They're, they have figured out so many ways, like asexual oh, reproduction. Oh, hey, and you left me a little present. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> millipedes poop just like everybody else. <laughs> oh! And maybe there's more. <laughs> Not every creature in the Insect Discovery Lab comes from such an exotic location. Some, like the darkling beetle, can be found anywhere, even in your backyard. And then there's the lubber grasshopper. And you would think that this comes from some mystical, tropical place on Earth. It comes from the Everglades of Florida. The secret is in the color. If you're green, everything wants to eat you. When you have red, yellow, orange, and black, you see it all the time. And it means, don't eat me. I could be poisonous. I could taste terrible. So I suppose the takeaway message here is never wear green. But seriously, the lubber grasshopper's warning coloration and the giant thorny phasmids camouflage are just a couple examples of the great diversity and creativity of nature. A diversity Norm and his group hope to protect one cool bug encounter at a time. We do over 800 programs every year. Wow. So there is no one no one across the country that does that many programs and links it to saving nature. Yeah, so your bugs are ambassadors, huh? They are total ambassadors. Brian Mallow for Time.com, San Francisco.